So, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're watching us from. We back again with a very special topic of how you can get your foreign degree qualification recognized in Germany or how you can even pave way into the job market. So, we have a lawyer, uh, Angela Kirupo, originally from Kenya, who studied law in Kenya, but she has managed to pave way into the job market in Germany. Reason being, uh, the challenge of many uh, professions in Germany have done law out of Germany, it is not recognized here. So we need to find out how and where do we start. And of course, she's a specialist of data protection. So what happens if you key in your data and all those online platforms and you buy shoes and you buy makeup? So what happens and what should you know? Right? Thank you, Angela. So Thank you, Carol. Let me know, let us know who is Angela. Of course, I know you, but let the viewers know who is Angela. And good to have you. Good to have such a powerful lady on the platform. Thank you so much, Carol. Oh, uh, I can't express, I mean, how much uh, I'm grateful to be in this platform and for those kind words that you're using to describe me. So, Angela. Angela is this girl from Kenya who in simple words I call myself in just one word actually I'm just a go-getter whatever I want I focus towards it so I am a lawyer trained in Kenya I worked uh, as a lawyer uh, I was admitted to the bar in Kenya in 2012 and I worked in Kenya until 2015 when I came towards the end of 2015 in Germany so before I came to Germany, I was already uh, an admitted lawyer in the Kenyan bar. I was also uh, a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in Kenya. And what else? I just began doing my uh, CPS. CPS is Certified Public Secretary in Kenya, but that's when I moved here. So that one, I didn't go far with it. Mm -hmm. And by the time I came here, I was uh, working my last job actually was working as a legal manager in a bank in Kenya. So when I came here, of course, my worry was, where do I start? And when you come here, that is the question, where do you start? And the first um, questions that I always ask people, uh, I would want, this is my CV. Of course, you come with very high hopes. This is where I was, you know, and I want to continue. And someone tells you, no, actually, you cannot be a lawyer here. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like my papers don't count. I went to school, you know, I got good grades. I worked, I have experience. Why mm. can I not work here? And that is where the whole research began because uh, for the very first time when I was here, uh, my f biggest challenge I would say was to start learning the German language. Mm -hmm. So, because you are, can absolutely get nowhere in Germany oh, without, language. without the language. Where do you go? You can't, even the people that you're supposed to ask these questions, if you're not speaking in the German language, they will just tell you, could you please speak German? So that was my biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. So my first uh, point was, as I came, I think within two weeks, I started my German language course. And I always tell people that there is no excuse not to start a German language course because when I came to Germany, I was actually six months pregnant, I think. Mm -hmm. Five to six months pregnant. So I figured out, I mean, language, uh, taking a language course is not... Uh, a strenuous exercise. I can just go, my lazy pregnant self, sit there, listen, do work and everything. Mm -hmm. So I did, I started with um, the German language course until I got to B2. I think B1 first, mm -hmm. but in the course of that, I was trying to find ways in between that. I was trying to find ways in how to, uh, to further my career. Mm -hmm. And my first um, idea was because every person that I was calling, it was, I cannot do this. But I was, I was convinced that there has to be a way. I mean, I cannot become from somewhere to nowhere. There has to be some way. So I got several advice. And uh, one of the things that I figured out, uh, there was, of course, the advice of forget about your law degree, just start afresh, look for an house building and start doing it from there. And I'm like, wait a minute, I, I studied a degree. I went to the Kenya School of Law, which is another two years. So I did a degree for four years, mm -hmm. went to Kenya School of Law for two years and did a, uh, my bar exams 
that all of that cannot be zero and i start studying with 18 year olds who just came from high school it feels like a waste of so much time yeah, in my life yeah, yeah. so that is why i yeah so uh, that for me was not an option so i still continued to do my own research and then uh one of the things that i did was i called the it's called the anerkennungsstelle mm -hmm. where you get your exam uh, oh, your yeah. your qualifications recognized mm -hmm. and i explained my circumstances and the person was very actually very kind to me and told me i would not advise you to even put in your application because there's nothing that you will get in return as a foreign trained lawyer we cannot recognize. equate yeah we cannot equate it is not that we don't recognize what we will tell you is that yes your degree you got a degree in law but that doesn't say anything. Whereas for other qualifications, they will tell you, you're placed here. You're like someone who has done maybe a master's here in something. Wow. But for law, there is, there is no such comparison because you learned in a different system of law. So there is no way they will say that you are like someone who did their first state exam because you are not like them. It is not that you do not have a qualification, but it is not equivalent. They cannot equate it. Yeah, they cannot equate it. And that is what she told me. She told me what she thinks can work is if a university can recognize those qualifications of mine, mm -hmm. then I can get an additional qualification here. Mm -hmm. Then that qualification that I would have got here will count. Mm -hmm. So this is how I came to the idea of now doing my master's here. So I looked for a master's course in law wow. here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, they ask you, you send your CV plus your transcripts from university and blah, 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 your letter of motivation, blah, 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 blah. I sent. And they accepted it as uh, equivalent of also a German law degree. So I would do the master's without any pre-university or something. Oh, wow. So wow. from the university perspective, I was then considered as someone who has equivalent of a German law degree. Mm -hmm. And that is how now I did my master's. So after doing my master's now, mm -hmm. it washes away, let me call it, the problem that you had of recognition. Because now from this point, the, the paper that you present, I am a degree, I am a master's degree holder in law. And then you don't have this problem of recognition of your foreign certificate. Ah, because now that is under the good, table. The, yes, because this is the assumption uh, that if you have a law degree, if you have a, a master's degree here, you must have had a, mm -hmm. a, a, an undergraduate or some equivalent of an undergraduate which allows you to have a master's mm -hmm. so that gets out of the way and now you have your master's and that is the paper that you will always present mm -hmm. and no one will ever ask you now backwards mm -hmm. and that is a very good thing because mm -hmm. for law degree i've also had several people ask me about the recognition it will be totally a waste of your money you will pay yes but the answer that will come is uh, your certificate is not forged which is not what you're looking for you're yeah. looking for the placement mm -hmm. of where you uh, rank in terms of uh, other people in the market and that is um, the main thing I can say so for me once I figured that out I started my uh, master's degree and that helped me to transition into this of course uh, that beside the point uh, on the side I was still doing my German language uh, classes mm -hmm. until I got to C1 because wow. also yeah because also for a whatever for a lawyer this is the thing for most uh, careers you are told you can get to b2 or b1 and you are good to go mm -hmm. the problem is yes the problem is with a lawyer the kind of documentation that you have to deal with you have to have very good command of the german language and there is no way you can do that beyond uh, getting to a higher level of the german education mm -hmm. the challenge again with just doing the language is that you will do the language but the language that you're doing unless you're doing it in an academic setting like in a university uh, language course it will be not very good for you unless you do extra work and this is the other part that i will come to how i got now to the this is for the issue of qualifications mm. when i come to now the career how i got into uh, the, the job, job market mm -hmm. I can explain that, uh, how I got now my German from the, on the street, from das ist eine Tasse, das ist ein thing, to getting it to a professional uh, level where you can actually review, draft a contract in the German language because it's different. You will learn 
uh, German language, but in a German class, no one will tell you, uh, what would I say, these legal general, terms, general. Yeah, they're general terms, they're not, um, it's not Fach uh, Deutsch, mm -hmm. so it's not a, a speciality German uh, course, and unless you find either that German special uh, speciality course, or you take your extra initiative on your own to do this, it will be very difficult. I think that, that's the bottom line. People do yeah. not look for this information. And, uh, and the sad part is you come here, you find like people have made the decisions for you. This is what you should do. <laughs> yeah. This is what we have been doing. And, uh, and this is now what you should do. So I keep telling people, you might be the first one to have even your, uh, your law degree, for example. Maybe if, the, if like, for example, if they have maybe so many people from the same area, they might be able to say, now we can be able to equate it, but we do not go that extra mile and ask for the information. I actually think, yeah, I think you make sense because, uh, for example, in Germany, there are the Rechtanwälte, and then the, these people were called uh, Wirtschaftsjuristen. Mm. My argument would be, for someone who has a foreign law degree, mm. I do not see anything that stops them from recognizing your degree to be a Wirtschaftsjuristin at the very least. Mm -hmm. Because the only thing Rest Anvert gives you is that you're able to go before a court yeah. and uh, represent someone before a court. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, even from my own experience in a job, I am in the same position with people who have their start exam and we do the same work. Mm -hmm. So it has not stopped me. There's nothing special about being a, a, a legal person here. It's just that, of course, you will need to do a little bit of one on two tra trainings here to learn what is different. But mm -hmm. the law principles are really not that much different mm -hmm. that you cannot learn or uh, get new ideas or change or improve you whatever the knowledge that you have from uh, mm. your degree from wherever you have it mm. wow before we jump to the next question of how you managed to, to join the job market so how did you manage to learn this the, the language for you know for the, the Fach, Fachsprache for lawyers <laughs> <coughs> sorry so this is it uh, for me the language when i did I had a challenge at first, and I have a very interesting uh, relationship with German language because when I was in high school, I was in a high school in Kenya where German was offered as a language and French, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I hated German for some reason, I don't know. So I did French. And I used to laugh at people who do German because they say, why are you learning a language that breaks English? Because to me, it used to sound like a language that is broken English. So, <laughs> so I already had that negative impression about it. So. At the beginning, when I started, I was like, ah, now I have to do that thing that I hate. Exactly. <laughs> but I realized, as soon as I realized I have no, no alternative, then you just give mm -hmm. yourself the encouragement. I have to do it. There is no two ways about it. So beside the German language classes that, uh, that I was doing, I uh, happened to, which is something that I will probably talk about in the next uh, question about how I got into the career. Mm -hmm. But uh, the short of it, uh, what is related to the German language, in a law firm that I worked, the lawyer in that law firm is uh, a foreign lawyer, actually. He's a Brit uh, British lawyer, mm -hmm. and he has written um, legal dictionaries. So it's an English to German. Wow. legal dictionary not a, a usual uh, dictionary but a legal dictionary where phrases in uh, legal phrases are translated to german wow and from working there i remember the first thing that he gave me was i'm giving you a gift this dictionary and he told me it's good that you're continuing to attend this uh, class uh, uh, sorry language classes yeah. but whatever you learn there you will never learn these words there so just take this book as your Bible. And besides this, everything that you're learning, you will use it on the street. But honestly, you might never use it in your legal career. So take this book. And so this dictionary helped me so much because that is where uh -huh. I got the, yeah, the, legal, the, the, the legal, legal German. Yeah. Wow. I had a similar uh, situation where when we started doing the, the German business law yeah, and uh, the, 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 the professor brought us the Big EB. I'm sure you know the Big EB. Yeah, Big EB. Yeah. 
said because we had done German as, as a foreign language, so we we didn't have we didn't know all these terminologies, and we're all yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you can't even translate it. It doesn't even make sense. Yeah? Sense, yeah. Practice, 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 and I think such a dictionary is a fantastic thing. And also, I have seen people who um, I think I saw it in some of the Facebook groups for. Uh, Kenyan ladies or uh, African mothers in Dutchland, I think, where someone who is doing some business course and they have to read the big game. My advice always is, even for me, when I started reading it, at that time, my German was not so good. Mm. Usually there is the translation of this uh, low book. Mm. So I always, my strategy was, I first of all, read it in English, in a language that I understand, get the concept, what is this particular section telling me? <laughs> Once I understand, what it is telling me now i read it in german in mm. german is just to, to connect <laughs> to connect it exactly to connect the words to what exactly what does this word now become in german mm. and that helped me to learn a lot of so those legal phrases so to say wow go get her so now you have your law degree you have your law bible and you're yep. ready now to jump into the job market so where did you start <laughs> <clears throat> Actually, I started before I got this master's degree. <laughs> yeah. As I said, I am the person who is a, a go-getter. So before I finished my master's degree, I wasn't even uh, started on my thesis. Just mm -hmm. as I was middle of, uh, in the middle of it, I got this idea, even not really, oh God, job market. I would start with the internship that I had in a law firm. Mm. So just as I was doing, I think after my B1 mm. German class, mm -hmm. so you can imagine so fresh. I think I was only six months in Germany when I got my B1. And then I started looking out for uh, jobs to do. Then this is where the realization that of course with a B1 in law, it will not get you anywhere. That was the mm -hmm. first realization, mm -hmm. but I need to get some sort of training to enable me to move forward. And those mm -hmm. are the things that uh, with a B1 or with a B2, I would still continue learning German, but I would not get this um, heuristic uh, experience also. Mm -hmm. And also to get this uh, German phrase, uh, legal phrases, which are in German. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I call myself a woman full of crazy ideas. I woke up one morning. You a go getter. <laughs> yes. So I called the uh, Anwaltskammer in uh, Nuremberg. Uh, Nuremberg is a city where I live in. So I called the Anwaltskammer, which is the law society in Nuremberg, and I explained my situation to this person on the phone. I am a foreign lawyer who wants to start a career in Germany, and I want to know where to start from. Yeah. Of course, I'm sure she was very shocked. Now this one, what does she want? Because oh, do you, you have no, yeah, exactly. You, you have no chance. But anyway, she was very kind. And she told me, unfortunately, uh, this is a society for already the lawyers. She doesn't know how much she can help me. But the idea would be, she can tell me how to find uh, lawyers who practice the sort of law that I have studied, which is common law. Germany is a civil law, society, uh, civil law system. Mm -hmm. So I was... Um, sent the link to the website and this is the website where all the lawyers in Germany are registered so you can filter out what type of law you can filter out someone who practices Japanese law mm -hmm. and then it will come like the law firms which practice Japanese law you can also filter out in which city it is and whatever okay. you can sh share with me the link then I can put it in the video yes okay mm -hmm. so I got it and then uh, of course my first um, try is someone within the city that I am. So I looked for a lawyer in Nuremberg who practices English law. I think I had like three, four people. Mm -hmm. From the three, four people, the one who was most interesting to me was the one that was not just practicing English law, but he was English. He was He's English. a Briton. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's a Briton and I checked it out. I saw there was a link to his uh, law firm and I checked the law firm. Now, of course, my curiosity is here. You are, of course, you come from a country which is in the EU, UK, but you have English law degree, which then <laughs> my degree and yours are pretty much the same. Mm. Why can't I be a restaurant if you are? Mm. This was my question. So I was interested in talking to this guy. Mm -hmm. After I looked out his uh, website and everything, and he was also a specialist in contract law and everything, I decided to contact him. So I called his law firm and said, 
I am so and so, I want to talk to this lawyer. Of course, the first person you contact is the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. your story, how you approach them. Huh? Yeah, but you see, you don't tell the secretary that I am this person who wants to look for a job. They will tell you, here's our email address, send it. <laughs> you have to be clever. Or we, yeah, or we don't have openings. And, you, and this is not the answer I want. I know what I want. Angela, the go-getter. <laughs> so I told this lady, this is my name. I am a foreign trained lawyer. There is something I need to confirm about English law. Could I please talk to the lawyer who specializes in English law in your law firm? Wow. Yes. And then she told me, uh, yes, uh, he's actually in the office. Let me find out if he can take a call. So she talked to the person Mad and approach. they said, yeah and they said they can talk to me and that is how i got in contact with him so he picks up the phone we're talking in english aha you come from the uk no i come from kenya okay <laughs> what do you need about english law i told him okay mine's uh, mm -hmm. yeah yeah mine is a bit uh different because it's a long Story. it's a long term <laughs> law questions so to say he laughed we talked so i explained to him that mm -hmm. i'm trained in kenya and i would want to know how to get uh, to move with my career here and i was interested in contacting him because mm -hmm. i know he does not have a german law degree but he's now a rest in yeah. germany and he goes to court and everything mm -hmm. and this guy was actually impressed just for the fact of how i approached him how you approached him yeah yeah that's yeah. what i loved most yeah <laughs> Yeah, and he told me, I don't have a job opening, but because of your approach, I'm just willing to meet you. I can see how I can help you. <laughs> so so yeah. we arranged, yeah, we arranged a meeting. I showed up uh, for the meeting in full gear. Yeah. yeah, you know, <laughs> and this is the difference in the culture in Germany, the law culture in Germany and in Kenya. In Kenya, usually when you're a lawyer, even if you're an intern, Every single day, five days a week, you are dressed in a dark blue, gray, or black suit. Mm. So this guy called me for coffee to talk about my blah, blah, blah. I showed up there with a neat folder with my black suit, sharp pointed heels, ready to conquer the world. <laughs> so I got there and then he actually made the joke. Oh, you actually dress like a common law lawyer. This is something I don't see in wow. Germany. <laughs> and he's a lawyer telling me this. <laughs> so yeah, oh. with that, I gave him my CV and he told me, ah, you have a lot of experience. I have, uh, my family is really small, mm -hmm. but I am willing to give you a stepping stone. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm afraid I can't give you a job. It's not really a job. It's just something to help you find yeah. your way. Yeah. And also it will help you in terms of just having the feel of the law um, scene in Germany. And if this is what you want to do in the long term, since at that time I was also doing my master's, mm -hmm. it was like, maybe we'll do your master's. And after this sh sort of internship in my law firm, and you're like, ah, I don't want to be in Germany. Yeah. I want to go back. Yeah. Yeah. So we agreed. I got a 450 euro job in a law firm. Mm -hmm. That was my first job. So uh, I used to work only on two afternoons. I would go there in the afternoons and my work basically was drafting of contracts. The good thing is that he had a lot of work, which was in English, mm. but I only had like a smooth landing for one month mm. where he just wanted to see what is my ability with drafting contracts and everything. Mm -hmm. After that, he started throwing me in the deep end, giving me German contracts. Wow. And I'm like, wait a minute. I told you I'm only doing my B2 right now. <laughs> How would you trust me to write? A he told me, yeah, because you came here, you said you want to learn. You, have you will never learn. Yeah, you English contracts, you already know. You've done them. I've seen. You know them. So you have to learn, and I'm helping you learn. So that is how I started. And that is when he gifted me this law dictionary and mm. told me, this will be your Bible, and this is how you will learn. Without doing this, you will never learn. And the good thing is that he also does a lot of translations. So 
he would give me, he would tell me, I know that this is the reason why you are in your B2. I know mm -hmm. you, your German is not perfect. It's not anywhere near perfect. But from doing these translations, I will be correcting the errors that you make. But from doing these translations, you will learn a lot because mm -hmm. the translations we used to do were for, the, for legal uh, documents. Mm -hmm. So basically these huge German corporations get into contracts and you know most of the international contracts are in English. But because some people in their companies don't understand English, usually they want this contrast translated mm -hmm. so that now they give the people in the company for them to understand what was agreed on. Yeah. So it was basically translating English contracts into German. Remember, I am still doing my B2 at that time. My German is nowhere near. I'm just halfway of it. But it was a very good training for me because I would learn through that a lot of legal uh, phrases in German. And that helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. So that is how I got my first job. And the good thing about this particular job is that this person kept on encouraging me. He told me, remember where you have come from. Like uh, your experience, you are not meant for a uh, for 50 uh, oh. euro job this mm. is not this is your training this is your internship mm. i want you to do and get something to do mm. so that was my focus that this is an internship for six months and i should get something within those six months so this is where the next research comes to okay my master's is about to end i will have done an internship of six months what where do I head to? Mm. So I was given options. He told me I have three options. It's whatever I choose and how persistent I am with those three options. Option number one was having an, a common law degree. You can do bar exams in the UK. So basically you just register yourself. You don't need anything. You just mm. register yourself for the bar exams in the UK. Mm -hmm. You prepare for the exam. You'll get the uh, exam date. You prepare for the exam. You do the exam. You pass the exam, mm -hmm. you are admitted as a barrister in the UK. Once you are admitted there, because of the EU thing, for him, this is the system how he got into becoming a rest envelope in Germany. So ah, he's, That's what I wanted yeah. to ask you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with his uh, law degree, he, he got admitted in the UK. And then you come to Germany and work under a lawyer as a referenda, that's what they call it, like mm -hmm. a trainee lawyer. Mm -hmm. So he was a trainee lawyer with, it, uh, with, um, with a lawyer here in Germany for mm -hmm. three years uh -huh. because of the EU recognition uh -huh. of the so UK. Automatically belong. Yeah. Okay. And then after the three years, he, be he, he became a restaurant. So that was the option one. Okay. Option two, he told me, is... You forget about everything that you have. You start doing uh, an Ausbildung, an Ausbildung as a Rechtfachangestellte. Yeah, Rechtfachangestellte, yeah. Yeah. You do that and you become a low clerk. Oh. Third one is you persist with your master's degree, you better your German, you uh, you become convincing that you can actually do this mm -hmm. and look for international law firms which don't only deal with German law. Mm -hmm. They usually have, uh, sorry, international companies or even law firms which have uh, different clients from all over. Mm -hmm. They would be still needing someone with common law knowledge and you can apply there. And for me, this sounded as the idea that I would the more be interested. Yeah. The most realistic. What is uh, the common law in German translated? Hmm, actually, what do they call it? I'm embarrassed to say okay. that I don't know. No, we can control this, no problem. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this common law, so now, after the, whatever, after I considered these options, my most realistic one was the third option. The third option of finishing my master's and looking for a company that is able to take me as I am. <laughs> so, and this is what I did. So, I searched around which companies are international companies and are employing people from different law jurisdictions. So and this is how I registered myself. Actually, the first company that I registered myself was in Adidas. I uh, went to the career portal, registered myself, and waited to get job alerts for jobs that are uh, in, area. in my area. Mm. And that's it. So it became, I think, like two, three months. One day I get an alert, something that I might be 
qualified for. Mm. And there's this job for an assistant uh, data protection manager. So I look at the job and I'm like, I actually qualify for this job. So do I apply? Do I not apply? I remember it was in sometime in August and uh, I was supposed to go on holiday a few days later. So I looked at the job. The problem was that the job had been advertised from April, That's which awesome. was a long time. Yes. Why is this job so open yeah. for so long? And <laughs> the qualification did not seem out of this world. Yeah. And every time you look at low... Um, low vacancies usually the uh, first thing at the top is estate start exam or a ministers yeah or a ministers try to start exam and mm -hmm. now this one is just asking me you need a low degree at least two years experience with working with contracts which when i look at it i already had about four or five years experience yeah. with working with contracts yeah. and i have a low degree they did not specify where this low degree of yours comes from if it comes from timbuktu or wherever <laughs> so i'm like good <laughs> this might be me this is this is me so i you know procrastination a bit i said let me wait probably this is a job that uh, has already even been filled up i'm just getting this late went on holiday came back after two weeks the advert is still there i became curious now this job either maybe the whatever maybe the company is bad or the boss there must be something wrong why is this job not being taken or they they forgot to remove it down <laughs> or they, yeah or they forgot to, re to remove it they already employed someone they forgot to remove it so crazy ideas in my head i went to linkedin because i'm uh, i've been in linkedin for a such a long time i went to linkedin and started searching for this job who has a similar a similar yeah yeah who has held a similar job mm. in the same organization so in adidas i looked for someone who had held the similar position <laughs> in adidas filtered two people popped up so actually one was a man and one was a woman i thought if i approach the man he'll think this is something which it is not yeah. it's easier to yeah. approach the woman yeah. so i approached the woman and i introduced myself my name is so and so i i'm just interested i saw this position which is being advertised in your organization and i just saw that you've held this position could you please tell me a bit about it and is the position anyway open first thing she told me yes the position is open actually it was my position higher so it's my job <laughs> <laughs> yeah. angela yes so it was her position she's just been promoted and yeah so it so i can tell you everything about it because it is my desk that you will sit on if you get it what a coincidence <laughs> Uh, things work mysteriously so she told me about what the position is and everything so i asked her could you please then look at my profile and everything mm. so she looked at my profile and she noticed that a lot of my experience has been in the banking industry mm. she told me this position is more on data protection mm. i told her actually in my masters i've covered units in data protection mm. how much experience do they need someone to have in data protection mm -hmm. she told me actually it's more of a beginner job so they can take as long as you have concrete experience in contracts the data protection you can learn yeah okay then i uh, she, she actually offered me then uh, if you want you can send me your cv i look at it and then i can advise you Fantastic. so i sent her yeah sent her my cv and she told me <laughs> i'm afraid that this CV of yours, you might look as overqualified for this job because, as I told you, this is a beginner job. Mm -hmm. And remember, from my background, I'm someone who had already even become a legal manager in a, mm -hmm. in, a bank. Uh, in a big yeah, and uh, and it was in uh, Kenya Commercial Bank. Kenya Commercial Bank is a multinational uh, bank. So mm -hmm. she was like, "This is a, you would not uh, be seen as a fit for this job." Mm -hmm. So I said, "But I want to fit this job." So she helped me. Uh, work on my CV pretty much everything 
really helped me a lot about it and uh, told me also if you really actually have an interest in uh, data protection you can take uh, additional uh, certifications about it and everything but it's not a requirement for this mm -hmm. job but yeah. it's something even for your interview that you can always talk about if you have yeah. an actual interest in it mm -hmm. because it's just a job that is um, it's a beginner job which they would uh, be willing to take someone who has an actual interest in it because you can then grow in it mm -hmm. I felt perfect. This is what I want. So all said and done after she went through my CV and everything, I applied for the job. This is the first job that I actually sent my CV. Remember the first job I had was the internship in the law firm, which I applied by a telephone call. So this is the first CV that I've written in Germany. I sent my CV and crossed my fingers and waited that I will get the job. So after I send my cv of course i waited i think about two weeks at some point i'm like i've given up now they, they are not going to come back to me one sunny day <laughs> i receive an uh, a phone call oh we received your cv and we would like to send you a link to a video interview so i received a link and that was the most shocking interview that i've ever done in my life because it is an interview of pre um pre-recorded questions yeah you don't see your interviewer you just receive a link the question is typed on your screen so once you start the interview the question is typed on your screen but you speak you're like on a skype meeting yeah. where you're speaking but you're reading the question mm -hmm. so i did that uh the interview the interview was very short like the, uh, the answer windows were very short so mm. you get a question tell us about your background and it is a 60 second the time it is a 60 second yeah it's a 60 second timed thing and once the 60 seconds uh, get done it stops recording so it will break you on you know it's easier when you're in someone will not uh, cut you short in an yeah, interview yeah. however yeah. boring you are yeah, <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> so it was pop 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 and i think it was like six questions so the final question it asked me if there's anything else i can add and this is where then i just thought this is my make it or break it question i just decided and said i am a good fit for this job i have a lot to offer i have a lot i can tell you about myself but i feel that in six questions which i have approximately six minutes because they were approximately one minute each mm. it is not adequate for me to tell you how rich i am in experience how passionate i am in your brand and blah 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 mm. so i would wish to get a chance to explain this wow. and yeah and left it they say you let go and let god so i let god <laughs> waited and waited it took another week i received an a call that we found your video blah 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 very interesting we would like to have a phone interview with you <laughs> we schedule another meeting where i have the phone interview you do the normal now hr questions mm -hmm. What would you bring to this brand? What is your expectation? Everything. I did that interview again. I asked, I'm told you will wait for another one to two weeks. You will be told. At this point, I was feeling like at some point, you know, I've done three interviews now, they're which are all serious. Yeah. The, then it's like they're not taking me serious. No one, I have not seen anyone because all of this is virtual or on telephone. and it's not skype that like we're talking right now you it's all on phone. the person the interview yeah I'm, I'm like oh maybe these people are just collecting information for some research you know <laughs> so anyway it ended after some days i received another call that it was successful now the hiring manager would like to talk to me we spoke with the hiring manager she was pleased about me she asked me about my german knowledge adidas does not um is not a german speaking company so to mm -hmm. say we speak mm -hmm. english it's the main language mm -hmm. but of course as i said if you have german language it's an extra advantage so she asked me if i speak german i said i can speak at that time i was through with my c1 actually so we spoke uh, at some point in the interview we switched to german we spoke in german she told me how oh, your german is good how long have you been here at that time i'd only been here two years 
And she's like, unbelievable. How do you speak that good German Mm -hmm. within two years? And I saw in your CV, you've just done your master's. When do you do these things? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, for her, actually, that was the driving. That Mm -hmm. was the part that she found me interesting for the job. She's Mm -hmm. like, this is someone who... I can trust, even mm-hmm. if she does not have the experience in yeah. this EU setting, that I can trust her to do this. She can deliver. Yes. And that is long and short of it. The decision was made. I was now called for the fourth or is it the fifth interview, which was now face-to-face <laughs> interview, where finally now I got the job and I've been in Adidas since November of 2017. That is how I got into my job market. And just as an highlight, so I started with this beginner, so to say, job. And I finally got my uh, promotion the beginning of this year. So I became a full legal counsel, which is the same. Now I'm the same position as someone who is a registered voting in Germany. So from January of this year. So that is my experience. So you see, we have another person. We have another expert. So if we have the same background, talk to Angie. (laughs) <laughs> I hope I can help. I will I only share as much Angie as I can. Angela, but talk to yeah. Angela. <laughs> yeah, no problem, Angie. <laughs> and be yourself and set your own goals because uh, I, I'm also that type where I go and look for the information myself. I don't sit there waiting for someone to define what I should be. And if I can just share another thing that uh, I thought that would be very important for this call, actually, Mm. for the master's that I did, I did it in a private university. In the private university, the master's uh, cost me around 9,800 euros. Mm. And I didn't have that money. From my research, I got a student loan. I actually have a student loan, which I have not even begun paying. Mm. Because after you finish your studies, from the time you finish your studies, they give you two full years. It is assumed that it's your time to settle in, you get your apartment, you buy furniture, and then you start paying. Paying, paying So, yeah, my actually, I start paying it in October of this year. It's still a grace period. I got a student. There's so many ways of how you can achieve your dreams. Yeah, so it's not a whatever. It's not a... it's a myth when people say that I cannot study just because I don't have money. Research, you can get student loans. Wow. I mean, we can talk the whole day. So now you're in, <laughs> in Adidas, you dealing with data protection. Yes. A sensitive area. I'm also very careful about data. So uh, we have all these very nice, beautiful online platforms where they're asking for our data. Uh, we have... So many in social media everywhere where we share a lot of information about ourselves. So, and I have a feeling we are not very careful with the data that we share. And then we end up uh, getting, or getting, let me say threats or alerts or sometimes, you know, some funny things happen to our systems yeah. and you're like, ah, I, but I didn't do this. I didn't read this. No, I didn't accept this. So talk to us. <laughs> I know you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Oh, there's so much I can talk about data protection. Actually. I think we need to have another session and talk about data protection. When when I when I click on that accept, <laughs> must be done does. If I go and delete something, is it really deleted on the interface or do I have other but is my information stored in other 10 servers and I don't know. Well, yeah, as I said, there is so much I can talk about data protection. Data protection is this big animal. And uh, just for information purposes, there is lack of sensitivity relating to data protection. But all I can say is for for purposes of this call, I will just limit myself to just our all tax leave mm. data protection in our normal day-to-day lives mm. where you want to buy things on amazon you want to order your makeup from some funny website in france or such a thing you have to be very careful because anything that you give in an online platform leaves a trail where you enter your account details first of all find out who is this which company am i giving my banking information to because there's the issue of identity theft. Identity theft is, can happen in a click of a second and you will lose all your money. You will 
you might even get yourself in problems because once you, um, your online identity has been stolen, say for example, your banking details, your money may be drawn to finance terrorism activities. You will be charged with terrorism without you knowing any single thing about it because money came from your account and was sent to ISIS, which you didn't know because you just clicked some things online and offered your bank details. It is very important to always avoid just putting in your information anywhere. Very important actually is the issue of cookies. Every, I'm sure you've seen this, everywhere that uh, you log into a website and then cookie einstellung and accepting. There's another new statement yes. about cookies. Yes. Cookies, yes. Those things always, it's not good to always just accept just because mm. you want to, especially from suspicious websites mm. or you're just in your idle time Googling whatever or this, um, what do I call them? Funny media where you've just seen a juicy, juicy story and then you want to read the story and then that is a clickbait. You click on it, now you're being tracked online. You start receiving funny adverts. Say if today you Googled um, headache, tomorrow you start getting medication profit yeah <laughs> where do you think someone got the idea artificial to start yeah, yeah. you yeah, exactly it's the artificial intelligence they are using the information you give them they cannot have this information without you giving them mm. it is just an intelligent machine working with the information that you gave them to process it to give other information and that is how and sometimes it even tracks for example um like fitness things, fitness devices and everything. Whatever, you have to be very careful with which uh, devices. It's good, we all want to be fit, but which companies? Some of them are very suspect. Mm. So it's not about the service that you're getting, but look at the integrity of this company. Does it protect data? Those terms and conditions that you look at, uh, you ha I confirm I have read and accepted your privacy notice. Have you actually read it? Do you understand? you have an app on your phone you feel like now i don't need this fitness app i want to delete it from their privacy notice which you accepted did you read that you can you're only deleting the information on your device and not in their servers or in the cloud mm -hmm. so all your information is still there and some people sell this information especially you have to be careful for companies that are not hosted in the eu eu mm -hmm. because of this uh, strict mm -hmm. requirements mm -hmm. It's difficult, of course, there are companies that still flout the laws, mm. but it's a bit regulated. But if you are clicking on websites of companies that exist in nowhere in the world where they have no idea about data protection, you are giving your information to anyone and it can be used in any way because they do not have any um, regulations for them. Although EU law uh, protects you as an EU resident, even if it's an say it's a Kenyan company collecting your information, you have a right as an EU uh, uh, resident, not a citizen. As long as you live here, you're protected by EU privacy laws. But the problem is, will EU go and arrest yeah. or claim from uh, that person in yeah, wherever in the cool. world? <laughs> yeah, that is the point. So it's take care of your own information on your own. Wow. Yeah. Take care of your children. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 and your children where you post them, be careful where you are. Or even like, you know, some children also keen information without the parents knowing. So that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, be alert and know what is happening. Wow. Thank you so much. I think we'll have another session and talk about data thank protection you among many others. Uh, thank you for such an inspiring story. I hope uh, that we'll have many lawyers also following your path so that we can we can be part of the policy makers that's actually one of my dreams to see what we can streamline and, and have our own space <laughs> thank you too yeah all right then have a nice day and talk to you soon. too thank you bye